you understand that COVID is primarily spread through the air. Now, so a lot of different parameters are going to affect this process. For example, we're outside right now. There's a bit of a breeze. So obviously, you're, if I were infected now, you would likely not get infected because the aerosol is going to be carried away. But when you go inside, for example, the wind is no longer important. So all of a sudden, these other parameters start becoming more important. And one of those is how long the virus itself actually remains infectious in the air. So we feel we've identified the underlying parameters causing the viruses to lose infectivity in the aerosol phase. And so the way we measure this is we use a technology that we developed at the University of Bristol uh, called Celebs. And with it, what we do is we create small populations of droplets of known chemical composition. We levitate them in electric fields, expose them to different gases, and measure how long the virus remains infectious for. And so what we do is systematically go through and change the conditions of the droplet, the gas phase, and see what does and does not matter in terms of the infectivity of the virus. Now, the kind of aerosol that we're interested in is respiratory-based aerosol. So things like saliva, people fluid, that kind of thing. And so those fluids are in equilibrium with your bloodstream, and as a result, have elevated levels of dissolved CO2. This is in the form of uh, bicarbonate, so baking soda, effectively. And so when you breathe out, those aerosols are leaving your body. What happens is the bicarbonate leaves the droplets in the form of CO2, and this causes the pH of those droplets to rapidly increase from around neutral pH to about pH 11. This fundamentally changes the way in which we think about how environmental conditions affect uh, how long a virus remains infectious in the air. Generally or typically, people think well, in terms of temperature and humidity, but what we're showing is actually the acid content of the air is much more important. So for example, in our experiments, we increase the acid content of the air and found the virus lives longer. And conversely, if you remove all of the acid from the air, what happens is the virus dies four times faster than sunlight. So this is one of the reasons why ventilation is so key for limiting dose, because not only are you physically removing the particles from the air, you're also removing those acidic vapors as well that help the virus to live longer. So we feel like we have a very robust framework for understanding why SARS-CoV-2 is no longer infectious in the air. The question becomes how applicable is this across all of respiratory viruses? 